Hello everyone and welcome to another episode of my Ring of Honor 2002 TW 2016 series. I recorded a bunch of episodes for this in advance, so yeah, everything that I'm going to be commentating about has already been said and done for the months of November, December, and January. And there are going to be a few surprises coming towards your way, so stay tuned for that. Anybody watching this video right now, I want to apologize in advance for the delay of videos on the channel that are being uploaded. Reason being, I want to record a bunch of videos, dub everything over, and upload them periodically. So, we're just going through the motions here. We made a $10,000 profit last month, which I was, which I was surprised about. For the amount of shows that we ran, I thought we were going to have maybe $1,000, $2,000, but it seems like the strategy that I decided to roll with ended up being great. So, just going through the creative meeting right now. I like to do this at the start of every episode, at the very last part of each episode too, the same ones. Yep. Chris Candido, all the way at the tippy top as far as negative momentum. What's good about it, though, is how I've been disciplining Tammy Sitch for her hard drug use. He's happy with the amount of fines I've been giving her. And I've been giving him hugs and telling him that he's awesome at the end of each event, so that helps. I've been doing the same for Kerr Hennig as well. Just trying to get him as happy as he could be. Because for whatever reason, he didn't like putting over AJ Styles. Even though he is the future of the promotion. That's the popularity, 27. So we are just 2% away from rising into the regional area of Ring of Honor. Contract, yet yeah, we're signing... D. Bra, Brian Danielson to a new contract at Ring of Honor because his contract was up in 30 days. So I did decide to re-sign some peeps. Brian Danielson being one of them. Alright, Samoa Joe with a new contract with another promotion. Excuse me. Scoot Andrews, Ring of Honor. Oh, nice. Abyss and Paul London. Pretty dope. And then dating, Natty Neidhart and CM Punk are now dating. Interesting. I wonder how TJ Wilson feels about that. Yeah, that is completely weird. Alright, so we're going to go into some news. And I apologize, again, if anybody's watching. I just got some bad news in a text. That kind of stung a little bit. But I'm going to keep going with this episode here. I'm not going to elaborate on what that is, but... It's kind of extremely shitty considering what I'm currently going through at the moment. Or my current struggle in life. Good stuff, TJ Wilson. Anybody who is a friend of mine knows what's going on. Anybody watching this video... I'm not going to disclose what that is, but god damn, man. Let's just meddle some people. No meddling at this time. So we're going to make the card now. These are the guys that are out, which kind of sucks. Working elsewhere. Where could these guys be working tonight? Who the hell knows? Alright, we're here at the start of the show. A nice B-. minus. Low-key, Abyss and Jimmy Jacobs defeat the team of Brian Danielson, Homicide, and Paul London. When Loki defeated London by pinfall with a key crush in 99. London was in there to take the fall of the match. And not to hurt either Brian Danielson or Homicide. Abyss was the weak link. Not really much of a surprise. However, I felt everybody did well in this match, given the circumstances of everything. I didn't expect for it to be a B-, but 
but I assume that's the case because of how well Loki and Brian Danielson carry the match for both teams. So, good shit. I like it. Hopefully, this is a way of helping these guys improve, get better performance, technical or rumble, all the above. I'm trying to build up Age of the Fall, so if there's any way I can help Abyss or Jimmy Jacobs and both improve with popularity, performance, and all that jazz, there we go. I mean, Paul London is the one improving on things. Hey, that's still pretty good. Steal the show, and which they did. We move on to the next match of the night, where we have Teddy Hart and Jack Evans, the tag team champs, defending their titles for the first time. Nope. I lied. For the second time, against Strong and Seidel. This was a regular match, nothing spectacular. In the next episode, after this one, I did attempt to do some things differently. Not by doing regular matches, but but for going towards high spot matches and etc. CM Punk calls out Chris Candido. You know, he's like, Candido, Chris, I want you out here right now. Where the hell are you? Nobody has seen you since that ladder match. Are you scared? Are you a bitch? All the above. And Chris Candido does not come out there at all. Again, where the hell is he? Where is Chris Candido? The world may never know. Kerhenek joins the commentary table. He wants to watch the Ring of Honor World Champion compete in a title defense against Bobby Roode. And here it is, title defense. A 68. That is spectacular. I did not expect that at all for these guys in the ring. Bobby Roode had some decent in-ring performance. AJ Styles, the better performer, so that's not really much of a shocker. Defense number four of the title. Great match rating. And Kerr Hennig has had experience in commentary before. So him being the special guest commentator... Did not drag anything down. And actually provided stuff considering he is the number one contender for AJ Styles' Ring of Honor world title. It is now time for the main event of the evening. We have Chris Saban defending his Ring of Honor rising title for the very first time. He is defending it against the, the Amazing Red and Austin Aries. Amazing Red is the one who takes the fall in the matchup after getting owned by a cradle shock from the rising champion, and he was able to defend his title. Austin Aries performed very well in the match. He had he had opportunities of being the new champion. However, Saban stands tall. He is still the Ring of Honor rising champion. We're going to continue praising Kurt Hennig here in hopes of raising his morale because it's not looking good. <laughs> Excuse me. I got all bunch of stuff in my nose. We're going to give this one to Paul London. He is improving, so that's good. Yeah, everybody seems to be happy. We're back over here. Adam Pierce, new UPW champ. Mike Knox injured. Nobody cares. All right, Ring of Honor driven, drew a thousand fans, sell out. It's a C, great for an indie show. It's definitely not going to be an A plus like a Monday Night Raw or a SmackDown with Jericho and Kurt Angle main eventing the show. But I'll take the victory. Joey Matthews still has morale issues. Same with Kerr Hennig. Screw both of those guys, man. Alright, so this was requested for everyone to view my product. And I did read in the comments section that I may have to lower my cult in the near future in order to get more popularity. Not more popularity, but more opportunities for my company. Since that was the same kind of issue that ECW had back in the day. 
because of how they ran their product, it was very hard for them to get a TV deal. And when they did get a TV deal with TNN, they cut them short and brought, I believe, WWE Raw to their network after their contract with USA Network expired. Or before it expired. So that has a lot to do with it. I'm just looking at these right now. I will get to it at some point when I get more steam with popularity in this promotion. I'm at January right now. Is I think it's January or February. I believe I'm at February right now for my recordings. But with that, everything is looking good. I'm not going to spoil anything on what's happening there. And that is going to be match of the year. Wow, 21 million viewers. Shawn Michaels defeats Steve Austin live on the air. That is free, man. Free television for Michaels versus Austin. That's a WrestleMania match. That is insane. Locker room incident. Oh, let me guess. I'm just going to start with saving first. Go with the, the horrible part last. All right, Casignole failed to show up for a scheduled meeting with a road agent. So, what I am going to do is slap him on the wrist. It's nothing major. It's not like what Tammy Sitch is doing and and is going into work. So wasted on hard drugs. Fine, nothing noteworthy. That was the first time I saw that. Chris Candido is usually happy when I find her and not fire her outright. And I can't fire her outright because she's in a storyline with CM Punk right now. And that's his valet. So not much I can do there. Just looking at all these. That meddling did not work between Headache and Styles. I still think it's pretty hilarious that Natalia and Punk are dating. CM Punk, man. A homewrecker. This is the opening match of the night. We have a Fatal 4-Way Tag Team Match at All-Star Extravaganza. Like I've mentioned in previous episodes, for big pay-per-views like this, I am going all out. Not all in, but all out. The third title defense by Teddy Hart and Jack Evans. They successfully defeat three of the best tag teams in Ring of Honor. Including the Heart Foundation 2.0. They are in the same faction. Everybody is improving. Harry Smith will get a push in the future. It's not now. Because there are a group of guys I want to push right now. However, he is a he has potential of being a strong mid carter talent or a strong man of enter. Let me know what you guys think about that in the comment section below. Damn, this microphone is sensitive, man. Jimmy Jacobs versus Homicide in a street fight. Jimmy Jacobs wins in 14 minutes. A C minus. Regular. Homicide kept strong because he wanted to whine like a little bitch about having to put over Jimmy Jacobs. We I don't want to put him over. We. Well, guess what, bitch? You're going to have to. That is part of the job in the wrestling business. Once you become a star and it's your time to fizzle out, even though Homicide's like 25 years old, uh, you got to put over the... What? I can perform better if you use me in matches that suit my skills, putting me in hardcore-based match. Look at this guy. He's covered in fucking blood. And he has a railroad spike in his mouth. How is this not his style of match? I may have to cheat with that one and just edit the preferences because that is retarded no offense to anybody uh that jimmy jacobs is not into that this is a number one contenders match Actually, i don't even think this is the number one contenders this is just a regular match austin aries versus brian kendrick versus claudio castagnole austin aries wins with a not a cattle mutilation but a last chancery Austin Aries will be featured prominently at Final Battle. Stay tuned for the matches that will unfold at that show. I'm gonna go. All, I'm gonna go all, all on in the show. And this match right here, I wanted to spice things up. Have Chris Saban defend his 
Ring of Honor Rising title against his former tag team competitor, Alex Shelley. Competing in a hellacious match. In the end, Chris Saban wins, defeating Alex Shelley with a cradle shock. Both of these guys are heels, by the way. Saban and Shelley are heels in this roster, or in this series. So, this is a heel versus heel matchup. Both guys have great chemistry, which is good. I can see Saban as being one of those guys that could have a great match of anybody. In the same category as as Loki and AJ Styles in this promotion. So, Saban, definitely going to be one of the founding fathers of Ring of Honor since Christopher Daniels went over to New Japan and screwed me over. Alright, Shelly and Saban shake hands after the match. The rating is not bad. I expected a lot worse. Excuse me, but that's good. We move over to the next match of the night. This was the most random match of all time. This is just a squash match to get popularity for Frankie Kazarian and Abyss. Frankie Kazarian is unbelievably popular on the West Coast. I'm trying to do the same for the Tri-State. Abyss defeats Scott Taylor by pinfall the shock treatment. Black Hole Slam, you know it. And now, Fatal 4-Way Match. Whoever wins this match will go on to face AJ Styles or Kurt Hennig at final battle for the Ring of Honor World Championship. Loki defeated all three of the guys in order to win. Chris Candido made his return to Ring of Honor after losing that ladder match. And he screwed CM Punk out of his chance at becoming the new number one contender for the Ring of Honor World title. This was an awesome match. I was quite satisfied by it. Loki is improving in Rumble performance. And I made sure that Samoa Joe was not hurt. Well, not hurt, but I made sure he didn't take the fall. Same with Punk. Samoa Joe is currently undefeated in Ring of Honor. And here we go. Uh, I screwed up here because this guy is past his prime. This was not what I expected. I thought I was going to see a much better match, but whatever. Defense number five. This was a two out of three falls match in which AJ Styles won with the Styles Clash. It was one on one, one, one and one, but AJ Styles was able to get the win in 27 minutes and 37 seconds. I feel like if Kurt Hennig was 44 years old, I feel he would be fine with competing in a 30 minute match. That's just me. And here we go. After AJ Styles wins the match, Loki and AJ Styles have a face-to-face confrontation. The commentators are hyping this up as the first main event ever for Ring of Honor Final Battle. And that's the WrestleMania pay-per-view for this company. Kerhenig. It's awesome. He wasn't happy about taking that loss either, but you can suck a fat one. And AJ Styles has had an awesome reign as Ring of Honor champion so far. I believe he won it at around June, August. So far, August, September, October, November. About four months as the Ring of Honor world champion. Will he lose the title to Loki at final battle? Will he retain? Who knows? Brian Kendrick is dealing with stuff. From his grueling schedule. Teddy Hart. Austin Aries. Dustin connect with the fans. He should probably. You should probably write him off. You notice how Teddy Hart is the only one. That's saying this about. Guys like Amazing Red. And Austin Aries. Like god damn dude. This dude needs to chill out. Still gonna push him anyway. <laughs> This is all the news. All-Star Extravaganza. Awesome show. And it was an awesome show. Despite the disappointing rating, I thought the show was awesome. That main event was not what I expected. It's my fault for having them go 30 minutes, even though Kerr Hennig is past his prime. Yep. Still angry. 
even though I praised him big time at the end of the show. I'm just looking at all the matches. Not all the matches, but all the events. I'm going for four events in one month. And I gotta make some for December too. There's only two, which is Night of the Butcher and Final Battle. There is Scramble Madness, which is in the third week. There will be some form of Scramble Match for that show. I just don't know what it'll be about yet. It'll be like a six-pack challenge or something. Ring of Honor Breaking Point's good. Let's have that. Third week of November. There we go. Dude, if I was just doing this like once a month, there is there'll be no way in hell that I'd be able to get any sort of popularity for this promotion. There's no way. And I want to make it realistic there are people that are like oh make a new make a show a day like every day put a show out it's like hell no man like these guys would just die if i had them wrestle constantly in ring of honor style matches every single damn day of the week nice show nice survivor series what a team. Big Show, Undertaker, The Rock, and Booker T defeat Austin Flair, Jericho, and Triple H. Benoit, Kurt Angle, Edge, and Bubba. They just beat a group of jobbers. Very interesting. But yeah... What a great Survivor Series. I really wish, like, soon. Maybe I'll be able to bring Ring of Honor to new heights in this game much sooner than re in real life. Because in 2018, they are main of not main eventing. I apologize. They are hosting a wrestling event at Madison Square Garden, which has not been done in forever by another wrestling company other than WWE. It'd be nice if I can afford to have these guys compete at Madison Square Garden. Who really knows, though? I mean, I am getting more popularity step by step. I need a TV deal, and once I get that and get pop more popularity that way, we'll be golden. I just wanted to check on Eddie Guerrero, too, see how he's doing in New Japan Pro Wrestling. He did have a 97 match against Tenzon and a 99 match against another dude. So he's having great matches. However, is he winning any titles? Is he main eventing shows? Hell no. Same with you, Curry, man. You freaking turned your back on me. I was going to have you possibly team up with Jimmy Jacobs in Age of the Fall. That would have been awesome. Instead, he just wants to be a comedy act in Japan. It's whatever, though. Go where the money flows. Joey Matthews, morale issues. Dimalenko. It is so tempting. So tempting to sign this guy, but I know I can't. I cannot afford it. And I already have Dutch Mantel as a road agent. And I have Gabe Sapolsky too. I mean, Gabe Sapolsky is not that great in this game. Maybe he's a genius in real life. After all, he is in charge of Evolve. But if I were to pick a road age between, excuse me, Dutch or Gabe Sapolsky, I would choose Dutch 10 out of 10 all the time. The guy in shoot interviews comes off as a dude who is very intelligent, knows his shit about the wrestling business, obviously. And has some and has seen some shit too. He was one of the guys that was actually there when Bruiser Brody got freaking wrecked in Puerto Rico. Him and Tony Atlas. Jersey All Pro Wrestling sold out. 
low key defeating Ruckus to win the JPW Championship. Adam Pierce defeats Frankie Kazarian. I think that's Nathan Jones with Mike Knox, and there's John Heidenreich. Kane defeated Shawn Michaels by DQ. Some decent matches there. My bad. I was just trying to move my mic a little bit. Looking over the champions of WWE. Crash Hall is the new Cruiserweight champion. Undertaker's held that title for about a year. Val Venus, Intercontinental champion. Quite surprised by that. I don't know if they're pushing Edge to WWE Championship or whatever, but from going going from Edge to Val Venus for the Intercontinental title, it's interesting, man. And Val Venus isn't... Yeah, the title has gone down with Prestige. Yeah, but after he won, it went down a little bit. Chris Jericho has been the undisputed champion for a year almost, and it's had a roller coaster, man. It's gone up, gone down, back up, and a little bit down again. Jazz, same old, same old. The prestige of the titles actually have gone down. Maybe they're not defending them that much. This is WWE, though, and they're national, so they're not global, just a national promotion. Here is TNA. BG James is still the champ. There are the tag champs. There's jo Joel Maximo as the X Division champion. I would love for there to be a way. Maybe they'll do it in TW19 if they plan on making that game to have, like, joint shows. Like a joint company show, meaning that, hey, with TNA, we can make our own, we can, like, have TNA versus Ring of Honor. And then you can easily book matches in between, you know, both promotions on the same card. That'd be pretty cool. J Jack Evans turned up very late, breaking the locker room rules. I'm going to give him a stern warning. Personality's gotten worse. There's Chris Candido. Was caught secretly using soft drugs backstage, breaking the locker room rules. I mean, I'll give him a stern warning. I don't really care about marijuana. I don't use it. Never tried it. I don't plan on trying it ever in my life. But I don't got a problem with those that do. Uh, I encourage that over any hard drugs that are out there. That will ruin your life forever. You can't really overdose on marijuana, so... do that yeah there we go i figured much and we're here for ring of honor scramble madness this is the scramble match i was talking about in which abyss defeats everybody i actually wanted monty brown to be the last one remaining but i guess cole cabana can be that too brian kendrick had the best in-ring performance and I need to, I, you know what, I need to have Kendrick in London, or London and Kendrick team up more. I'm just having them go their separate ways temporarily. But, Brian Kendrick gets the truth as far as being an in-ring competitor. And he is underrated as hell in real life. When I am the, uh, what the hell was it, what era, it was back in 2008, 2009, but when Brian Kendrick had that singles run... The man with a plan. That guy, I thought, was going to be a future WWE champion. I don't give a shit about his size, man. I felt with his character and his in-ring ability, he could do it. But his attitude in the, in the backstage area, from what I've heard, was awful. Here you go. CM Punk is scheduled to compete in a singles match tonight. On the previous Ring of Honor event, CM Punk was in the main event of the Fatal 4-Way matchup to determine the new number one contender... For the Ring of Honor World Championship. Punk was closing in on winning. I don't know why I put one. On winning the match after hitting the Pepsi plunge. But Candido came out of the crowd. Grabbed onto Punk's boot. And yanked him out of the ring. Costing him the opportunity against AJ Styles. Tonight Punk and Tammy Sitch were making their way to the ring. But Punk was attacked by Chris Candido from behind with a Singapore cane. 
The crowd erupts with the light at the side of the mayhem. Candido strikes Punk with such aggression with a kendo stick from behind on the rampway into the ring. Punk rolls into the ring with an effort of trying to get away from Candido. But it didn't work. Candido went after Punk, mounting on top of him and raining down a series of right hands onto his head, busting him wide open and starting to strangle the life out of him with a single poor cane. Tammy Sitch finally gets involved, attempts to bring Candido off Punk, but to no avail. With the surprise of everyone seeing Punk, sh not seeing Punk, Candido shoves Sitch backwards and she landed hard on her back. Candido freezes, realizing what just happened and gets back onto his feet. He turns to to Punk's direction briefly, shoving him out of the ring under the bottom rope. He approaches towards Tammy, snatching her hair, getting her onto the second rope in position for the blonde bombshell. The power bomb from the second and top rope, I guess. Cornette is trying to plead with Candido, telling him not to do it. He will give him anything he wants as long as he doesn't hurt Tammy. And he reminisces about their SMW days, Smoky Mountain Wrestling. Candido says, and he yells so everybody can hear him. I want Punk at final battle. I don't want to just beat Punk. I want to take everything away from him. His career, his livelihood, everything. I want a match with no rules. I want Punk at a last man standing match. Cornette tries to talk, but Candido interrupts him. Interrupts him. I'm not done yet. When I win, I want Punk gone from Ring of Honor. And the crowd goes ballistic. Cornette raises his microphone upward to respond to Candido's offer. I'll give it to you, Chris, but I can't let the stipulation be completely one-sided. If you lose to Punk at Final Battle in December, you will be gone from the company as well. Candido says, you're on. Crowd erupts again, and he still hits Tammy with the blonde bombshell. Power bombs her from the second rope, and she is laid out. Cornette is getting EMTs, a stretcher, to help Tammy out. And yeah, man... Chris Candido versus Punk at Final Battle. Loser leaves Ring of Honor. Will Candido finally get his win over Punk? Or will CM Punk get the win over Candido and make him leave Ring of Honor for however long? Or vice versa. Nobody ever improves with in-ring promos here. I felt that was probably the best segment I've ever produced in this series so far. We have a match with two old-timers. Nothing special there. It's just a superb match. I mean, nothing special, but a superb match. I guess I kind of I contradict myself there. 12 minutes. Didn't want to have them wrestle for too long because they're old. But Kurt Hennig wins. And we see a confrontation between Saban and Austin Aries in the ring. Austin Aries is the new number one contender for the Ring of Honor Rising Championship. I forgot that the earlier match when he defeated Amazing Red and Claudio that he won the contendership matchup for it. But yeah. Carlito is like, why was I, why was I not in the Ring of Honor Rising Contenders match? I felt I deserved a chance at facing Chris Saban at Final Battle. What the hell gives? So a Carlito-esque promo from WWE here in Pennsylvania, which the fans do not approve of. And this moves on to Austin Aries versus Carlito, where Austin Aries defeats Carlito with a brain buster. A decent match. I want to elevate Carlito more. He's okay on the mic, but as far as in-ring performance, he's not that great yet. And Carlito Colon accidentally gets hit by Chris Saban, in which Aries capitalizes for the Brain Buster. Here we go. AJ Styles, Brian Danielson, and Homicide versus Loki, Roderick Strong, and Bobby Roode. Loki defeats Homicide, his, I believe it's either his protege, yeah, his protege, uh, by pinfall with a key crusher 99. 
So Loki has momentum going into final battle in December. And I felt this was a well put together match. A nice main event. I wanted Roderick Strong to shine a little bit. Same with Bobby Roode. They look good in front of three main eventers of Ring of Honor. But where will they go from there? Who knows? I don't have any concrete plans for Bobby Roode. I may put him in a tag team. I mean, he was randomly put together with James Storm with beer money. And that ended up being a fantastic thing for both guys. So we'll see what I have planned. Kerr Hennig, we're going to tell him he's awesome, so he's happy. Trying to figure who I should uh, praise here. Abyss. Praise for a good performance or a great performance. And low key. Carlito. Everybody is cool. This is our popularity. Look how far we've gotten, man. 34. We are so close. So close to going towards regional status for this company, man. I am pretty freaking stoked by it. We got some wrestlers court here. Matt Sidell has to buy drinks for everybody now. Homicide has been passing on tips. Oh, so I guess hom Loki is Homicide's protege. I guess I got that mixed up from before. We have a lot of strong friendships on the roster, which is fantastic because whenever Tammy Sitch gets busted for hard drugs, it really doesn't impact our morale too much. Everybody seems to be happy getting along and whatever, which is great. We have the Briscoes. Oh, look at this. Baxi Boys win the number one contenders match, beating the Briscoes and Joey Matthews and Christian York. So they will be facing these guys right here, Teddy Hart and Jack Evans at final battle. They get the win over their stable tag team partners, Hart Foundation 2.0, Harry Smith and TJ Wilson. Jack Evans one-ups TJ Wilson with a roll-up and manages to get the win. So we're going to see Teddy Hart and Jack Evans defending their titles against the Backseat Boys at Ring of Honor. Not right, at, at Ring of Honor Final Battle. So that's a tag team match of our WrestleMania-esque pay-per-view. Which I cannot wait to release to everyone on the channel. That's going to be an awesome show. The Backseat Boys attack the champions in hardcore fashion. So these guys are CZW motherfuckers. They're coming in there. Steel chairs, Singapore can and all. Even though Teddy Hart and Jack Evans won and they fought hard for the victory, they get beaten down by these two guys. TJ Wilson and Harry Smith try to help. They get their asses whooped too. And in the end, Trent Acid and Johnny Cashmere stand tall. They are the new number one contenders again. And that is what ends this show. So the final show of the month, that is it. That is the end of November. Let's see who we can praise. We got Samoa Joe. Or how Scott Steiner says, Samoa Joe! All right. I'm trying to figure out who else I should go with. All right, we got Chris Hero here. No, we're actually going to go to Paul London. But yeah, that is dope. I actually like this event. Complaints by both guys. Bunch of whiny assholes, man. I also keep forgetting about independent promotions. That when they compete at other shows and other promotions, they can still get popularity from it. So let's simulate all that.
We are in the month of December. We're first in everything. We're crushing it. The four paper, not four pay per views, but the four events per month is helping out. I'm not worried about that. That's an open agreement. All right. Looking good. Looking good. I am digging it. Just looking at the roster a little bit here. Shark Boy is insanely popular. Look at that dude. 76 in the mid Atlantic. What gives? That is insane. WWE should be knocking on his door soon, man. And we only made about $3,800 in profit. Kind of unfortunate, but it is what it is. There we go. We're making progress. Ever since we did that solution where we have four events per month, it's been helping out. And I'm only focusing on the Tri-State. Because if I do try to host a show in one of the other regions, we're not going to get as much money and we're going to get insanely wrecked. Spillover. The spillover rate is 20%. These are the events. Final Justice. That is an insanely good pay-per-view name. I gotta write that down. I may use that name for a PIW pay-per-view, man. Note to self, anytime that I need to think of some good pay-per-view names, just put on TW2016. And there I go, man. I'll be able to get all that there. Ring of Honor Madness, Take No Prisoners. I'll go with that. Alright. Gotta make another one. Just a heads up too, for anybody watching this, I have recorded episodes of General Manager Mode. And that's been a complete roller coaster ride, man. And you'll know why when you watch all the episodes for it. We're at the end of the month. Hennig, Loki, Brian Danielson, Chris Candido. Not really surprised by these two. I am pushing Jack Evans as a tag team competitor. I don't see him being a single star in Ring of Honor. Not like Chris Saban. Chris Saban's going to be huge in this company, man. Hot prospects. I can see Chris Saban going for the Ring of Honor world title at the end of 2003. Showstoppers. Loki versus AJ Styles, a final battle. Man, that is going to be insanely good. Who's hot? These guys. Who's not? These five. 
Yeah, I've been jobbing now. Joey Matthews like crazy ever since he came to an event drunk as hell. I don't plan on signing any of these folks yet. All right, so this is the end of the episode. Don't forget to subscribe, like this video, leave a comment down below, hit the bell icon to join the notification squad. No broadcast deal yet, and I'll see you more for next time. Peace out. Have a great day. Stay tuned for the next episode of the series.